In this video, I will be assigning footprints uh, to individual components on the schematic. This is an important preliminary step uh, before laying out the PCB and is ideally done at this stage, although you can go back and change footprints later. Now what's a footprint? A footprint is uh, the pattern that is made on your printed circuit board uh, when it is fabricated. Um, and it consists of uh, several components. Uh, one of those is the outline um, of the component shown on the silk screen. More importantly is the pattern of holes, um, which uh, is uh, where you drop your through hole components, like the ones uh, we're using. Um, other components can have pads for uh, surface mounted electronic components, um, but we'll be using mostly through holes. And the way you find out what is currently the footprint assigned to a particular schematic item. Remember, we add schematic items uh, by using the place symbol. And so you choose at that time um, an item. So let's double click on, say, the 555. Again, you can tell us the 555 because when I double clicked on it, it's got the name and the library. Uh, and you'll notice it has a, a footprint uh, in there already. And um, to look at what this footprint looks at, of course, the reference is IC1, the value is fine. Let's click on the footprint library. And it brings up something which is a 8-pin uh, dual inline package, 7.62 millimeter width. This is, in fact, the proper packaging for uh, a standard 555 timer or an 8-pin socket of any kind. Notice that. Um, it's got the reference names, it's got the pins labeled. On this particular footprint, there is a square pin for pin one. That's a common convention. And there's a notch uh, out of the top end by pin one of the um, IC uh, for use in alignment. Um, having brought it up in the footprint library browser, which is what clicking on that library icon next to footprint does, I guess I could choose all sorts of other um, related uh, packages. Here are some 10-pin, some other 8-pin, and 12-pin, uh, 14-pin packages, etc., with different shapes. Uh, this also one happens because it's a common uh, component. also has a 3D shape associated with it, which means we can go up to the 3D viewer and see what it'll look like in 3D mode just on its own. And that, yeah, looks like a 555 timer. All right, and close this and uh, close the window here and cancel out because everything looks fine. Uh, let's look at uh, the remainder of the components. Um, start here with this 10 nano fat farad capacitor 2. It's got a footprint associated with it. And a 3D view. You'll notice these are the same ones, of course, that were on the view from the VCO. I just copied them over. Let's look at the electrolytic capacitor, the 10 microfarad. Now, I didn't use any electrolytic capacitors on the VCO board. Um, and uh, this doesn't actually have a footprint associated with it. So we are going to have to go and take a look in the library uh, to figure out what exactly capacitor we should be using. Um, automatically goes to capacitors, um, or we could scroll around to find it. Notice we've got dicks, uh, disks, axials, radials, etc. Just to take a quick look, there would be a um, radial, tantalum, Here are some more radial capacitor designs. We are need to going to I have to identify the one uh, that we are actually using. So at this point, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and go look through uh, the capacitor package uh, that came um, with the sequencer box and go and take a look at your component. And we'll try to select the proper of these different um, symbols um, by looking at the physical shape of our capacitor. Alright, so I went and measured uh, the capacitor. This is the 10 microfarad capacitor. 
uh, that uh, is in the sequencer kit. Uh, it seems to be five millimeters in diameter, uh, about uh, 11 millimeters long. And the pin separation is about two millimeters. So let's look for polarized capacitors in a radial geometry that have those dimensions. So P is for polarized, so CP is a polarized capacitor, and you can see all the various polarized ones have an indication of a square for the plus and circular um, for the minus pin. Um, axial would be laying down flat like uh, sort of resistor style. There are some capacitors made this way. But we need to find, um, looks like this one, CP radial, five millimeters in diameter, that's the D, with a pin separation, the P of 2.0 millimeters, so that matches um, what we have. Now there's a problem um, with this footprint, which doesn't stop us or preclude us from using it, but it is a cautionary thing. Um, if we look at the 3D model, um, we will see it's definitely too short. And that you'll notice there is not a length specified. And so with a lot of the 3D models in KiCad, you will find that um, they're not complete, not all options are available. And particularly the 3D modeling, I wouldn't trust for more than just sort of a reality check on your design at this point. But the 2D part, which is all we care about because we're making a 2D pattern on the printed circuit board, is fine. So uh, let's go with it. Um, double clicked on it. It has uh, added it now to the footprint. I'm going to preemptively copy that entire string uh, that has the footprint location and hit OK. We can double check it real quick. There is our footprint, and I'm just going to go ahead right now and stick that same footprint into the other electrolytic capacitor, which is the filtering one um, for the other IC. Okay, great. So those are done, um, and then you should systematically go through and uh, check the other capacitors. The 22 microfarad has an identical footprint, so we'll put him in there as well. Let's look at the uh, resistors for a moment. Now the resistor footprints uh, I simply copied over from what I'd done in the VCO. And I was a little unhappy with the VCO because there was such a long um, spacing, you know, sort of the constructive criticism I got back, uh, between where the uh, leads go in and the body of the resistor. Just really long space on those wires, which is using a lot of space and makes insertion um, you know, maybe a little bit messier than it has to be. And that's because of the dimensions here. So um, this is a um, axial as opposed to a radial geometry for a resistor R. And uh, here's the code for it. You see the length is 6.3 millimeters, diameter is 2.5, and the pin separation is 15.24. So we really probably want to shrink this pin separation up a little bit. Um, let's find uh, this components. There it is. It's the one that's highlighted. And it looks like if I just um, keep everything else the same, the length and diameter, there is a preloaded model for a 10 millimeter pin separation or a seven millimeter pin separation. That's a little tight. Let's go with the 10. So I'm going to stick this one in here and make this edit. I am going to now copy this. And I'm going to stick it in each and every resistor. Just updating to that 10.116 distance. quickly go through and find every resistor. Again, starting at 15 and then shrinking that by half a centimeter effectively to the 10.16. I have all the resistors, uh, I believe, over here. Just quick double check. Yep, he's correct. Correct. I know I got this one first. So now we just have to do the current limiting resistors uh, all in a line. Yes, he's stuck.
tells me when I make a mistake. Let's double check him. Looks good. All right. Now, let's look at some of these other components. Um, let's double check the jacks. They were looked pretty good on the uh, VCO. Fit quite nicely, I thought. We can always just take a look and see there is our jack. Um, notice that there is no 3D um, view for this jack, I believe. So um, no one's built one yet, uh, that I could find at least. And so uh, it'll just stay as is without a nice 3D render. It's a project to work on uh, for another day. Let's get to these diodes. Now, on the VCO, I had um, not done a good job of getting a nice uh, diode footprint on there. So let's go looking. Um, automatically should have brought up diodes. Nope, no diodes here. Let's go looking. Diode. SMD is for a surface mount, and TH for a through hole. All our devices are through hole. And wow, there's a lot of possibilities for diodes. Let's take a look at some of them. Again, this one looks, looks pretty good. And checking my actual diode, I find that uh, yeah, about 10 uh, millimeters is uh, reasonable for the pin separation. Let's see what other options there might be. Now, mounting a via diode um, horizontally is uh, clearly going to be preferred um, to vertically, which is uh, what we had to do due to space constraints on some of the power supply diodes. And once again, it looks like it makes sense to go and actually measure our diode diameter and uh, make sure we have the right thing. So uh, this very simple detector through hole um, looks like it's going to work. Here are some pictures of my actual diodes uh, showing that uh, the diode itself is really only like four millimeters long. And so uh, 10 millimeters across should be fine. And uh, also they're quite thin, uh, just to get a two millimeters wide or so. So this looks like um, uh, we can use the 10 millimeter, uh, will be plenty generous. Again, that five millimeter pin separation might fit, but 10 millimeters uh, looks a little bit better. So we'll choose that one. Again, I'm going to copy this and put it in there for uh, diode 20. Check that again. There it is. We'll look at the 3D view. Looks fine. Um, and uh, remember, the cathode gets the uh, stripe and the arrow in the direction of current flow is this direction. Okay. Now we have to do the rest of these. Well, we'll go straight across. It looks though that there's a shortcut, which is we can press just edit footprint. Does this work for us? Wonderful.
Make sure that's stuck. Great. So again, it was F is the hotkey. Paste. OK. F, paste, OK. F, paste, F, Now the second row, this is for the CV outputs. These were for the gate outputs, so CV outputs. Again, pressing F to edit the footprint with that hotkey. Don't want to move it, so I hit escape. Operation ends. F is what I want to press to edit the footprint. Okay, we had another diode uh, in here. That was uh, back protecting the 555 timer in case of bringing in an external clock. We'll give him the same footprint as well. All right. So what we have left is uh, LEDs, pots, and the uh, final jumper connector to worry about. Let's look at the pots. Now we'd use the um, nice metal alpha pots, uh, which are quite expensive, um, uh, and are metal uh, on their uh, shaft. In the VCO, and uh, there is the layout, and um, it's a little hard to get them in, but but it seemed to work all right. Um, there is a, a problem, however. It's not a problem we're going to fix quite now, but it's something I want you to be aware of. Um, which is that um, the actual um, plastic shaft pots, which are in the pots baggie that we're going to use for the sequencer, don't really fit. So here's a, a picture of the VCO board and what would happen if I attempted to put in um, one of these 100K pots that we use so many of uh, in the sequencer, nine pots total. Uh, here's a zoomed in picture and you see that the problem is that the the pot just doesn't fit now that um, the side mounts don't fit and those side mounts are important for stability uh, to hold it in place so those oval mounting holes just aren't big enough quite to fit it in um, the three prongs um, for the actual electrical signals we care about um, the three pot pins uh, fit just fine um, but this part of the footprint doesn't seem to work so it's going to require some alteration uh, before we use it. Um, but this alpha pot's the closest thing around for the moment, so we are not going to uh, mess with it just yet. Uh, we're going to leave these pots in place. Cancel out of here. Um, we have the one for the timing, and then all the ones over here, I'll just spot check one of them. This is also uh, an alpha pot. Um, and it'll require a little bit of editing later. Okay, LEDs. Let's see what our options are. Here's the LED that blinks every time the clock signal comes in. What do we have for footprints? LED through hole. Again, SMD is for surface mount. So uh, this is definitely what we want. Oh, here's an oval. 
Um, we're using those nice looking oval LEDs. Let's take a moment and check and see if this is going to fit or not for us. Again, taking a photo of our component, this case, the red LED, we find it is just over five millimeters across. Uh, so that looks pretty good. Um, the height, maybe more like uh, seven millimeters. Um, so this height isn't correct on the oval, but again, what we really compare care about is the 2D layout and we're not gonna bother to edit things to uh, change heights. Uh, so this looks like it'll fit really, really nicely. Um, let's see how it does look in 3D. Yeah, that should do quite nicely uh, for our round oval LEDs, be they green or red. Again, copy the footprint identifier. Put that in. And now we'll just run through all these LEDs again using the F hotkey. Let's make sure we got that first LED incorrect. Nope. All right. On to the last part, uh, the last component we have not uh, checked out yet, I think is the, uh, well, we connectors. And they have to go back and check the 4017 as well, I suppose. Um, yeah. Well, that's definitely not what we want. <laughs> uh, we need to go and find a connector. So um, what we're going to do is put a row of header pins in. Um, connector. Headers. 2.54 millimeters, so that's a tenth of an inch separation. And now a tenth of an inch separation is what we have on a standard breadboard. Um, so that's what we're going to use, and we're going to do a 1 by 10. One by 10, lots of options here. That's definitely not us. These are surface mount designs anyway. There's the vertical that looks like what we want. Uh, notice some of these other formats where the pins had uh, lay flat, uh, for instance, um, aren't really of interest to us. So that here uh, is our choice. And we have two of them next to each other. So we'll stick this in. And apply it uh, to J5 as well. For fun, let's take a look, see if there's a 3D model. That's what it'll look like. We'll take a row of header pins, plenty of those in your extra box, etc., and we'll lower line uh, two of them up next to each other. Beautiful. Finally, the 4017. We have a data sheet, uh, but we do not have a footprint. 
So I have to keep in mind uh, this is a 16 pin integrated circuit. Dual inline package 16. Long pads option, small pads look fine. What else do we have? It's for surface mounting, so there's no holes. And there's a specific one for a socket. The socket just seems to have an extra outline around it. And here's a problem, which is that there are different widths, even for 16 pin. So once again, we have to measure the uh, width uh, and get that correct. Um, the width is going to be the distance, it looks like, between the pins. And our choice is either 10, 0.16 millimeters, or the narrower 7 0.62 millimeters. We'll see which one of those matches up. A quick uh, reality check shows that 7.62 is the standard distance for the innermost set of pins on a dual inline package that fits straddling the center rake in a breadboard. Uh, so that's what we're going to go with. Should fit nicely. And there's the 3D view. If we had done the socket, it would have just looked a little bit different in 3D. So there's the, uh, the socket. We'll try leaving the socket in. Doesn't seem to make much of a difference. At this point, we think we're done. We think we have uh, absolutely everything accounted for. We still need to go back and do some checking, make sure we did actually hit all the capacitors, check all the capacitors up here, the electrolytic ones especially. Um, right, we're just going to use DC capacitors here, so let's make sure that looks okay. Yes, that's good. 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 And then finally the connector. That looks like the right thing. Now we have to keep in mind a little problem from the VCO um, where we mounted this component upside down. Um, but we'll have to deal with fixing that once we are in the actual PCB layout mode. There's sadly not a 3D model uh, for this connector yet. Let's save. And uh, I think we're ready to make our PCB. And that'll start in the next video.